Hey, what's up? Ken from Palm Beach Dino here. Today, we're gonna to talk about dino numbers, specifically weather correction. A lot of people have a, a ton of questions about that and which numbers to use and uncorrected versus corrected numbers. And what I'm here to tell you is corrected numbers are very, very important in most cases. And uh, we're gonna show you why today. Uh, when I approach these videos, it's kind of, you know, useful that I can show you or tell you how things are, but when I can show you, it's much easier. So today we had something pop up in the shop that I think is a great example and show you how corrected dyno numbers are really, really valuable. So first off, what we're going to talk about today are two different GT500s. One of those is my personal GT500, which I'm sure you guys have seen on the channel. The other one is owned by Ryan. He, he recently dropped that off for our new uh, CX1100 package and uh, something popped up that I thought was a, a great way to uh, show you the difference on how correction numbers do make a difference. So let's go ahead and watch it pull on my car. As you can see, obviously sounds great, made great power, 996 horsepower, 716 torque. This is with a 2.7 pulley before the billet lid. Uh, this is actually a pull right out of our pulley testing video, which you can go ahead and check out here. Let's go ahead and watch Ryan's car and then we'll talk about that. Sounded pretty similar. 1,059 horsepower, 770 torque. So what's the difference here? I mean, we're talking over 60 horsepower and over 50 uh, on the torque. I mean, that's a pretty significant difference. When you see a, a graph like this, what might you think? You might think that it had a different pulley on it. No, maybe it was running on different fuel. Nope, maybe it had a drag radial on it. No. Both cars had carbon fiber wheels with the Michelin tires. So what is different on these two graphs with two very similar cars? What was different between the cars? The answer is zero was different. The difference was in the weather. As you can see, uncorrected. We're showing you uncorrected numbers. So how does this happen? What do uncorrected numbers mean? What does correction mean? Well, the best way to explain it is a lot of people understand density altitude when drag racing or just in general. My car feels so good when the weather's cold and when it's hot, it doesn't feel as good. Why? Well, it's making more or less horsepower. So that's where the correction comes in. Uncorrected is the power measured at the wheels on that day. Sometimes that number could be useful, but in general, and the way we're using them on this channel, and the way most of you use them, the corrected number is what you want, because that is going to take into account weather. So if you dyno your car on a warm day, and then you dyno it on a cool day, or you're trying to compare your dyno numbers and mod lists to somebody across the country in a different area with different weather, the correction factor makes that at least somewhat more reasonable. Once you go uncorrected, then there's really not a whole lot of value to this dyno graph without knowing more information. I guess your next question is gonna be, what does it look like with corrected numbers, okay? Well, that's why I thought this made such a great video because with over a 60 horsepower spread uncorrected, once you apply the correction, it looks like the same exact, I mean, you couldn't draw that any better over each other. Uh, 1,011, 1,008, 735, 725. I mean, practically identical. Um, but we're at 65 degrees roughly on uh, Ryan's car today, 30.1 on the pressure and 20% humidity. We were at 30.13 on the pressure with my car, but the big difference was it was uh, nearly 90 degrees in here and almost 60% humidity. So that's where the 60 horsepower went. So, 
uncorrected will show you if you dyno your car today and you take it out to race, that is gonna be the accurate number on how your car will perform. But we're not really dynoing our cars to see how they will perform exactly to a number. We're dynoing them to baseline them versus other combinations often. Now, on a fully custom race car or fully custom application, this sort of stuff really doesn't matter as much because you're, you're not really comparing. Although it does because if you're trying to, uh, even if your car is completely one off, if you want to dyno it today and then make a change and then dyno it three months from now when the weather's completely different, you got to make sure you're not picking gains up with weather or losing because it's getting hot or anything like that. So really it's always important, but in our market it's super important because everybody wants to compare dyno numbers, which isn't always very useful or productive. Uh, but if you're comparing dyno jet numbers, you can get some very consistent numbers using the correction factor. Now, there is a little asterisk here. Once you get up to very high altitude, depending on the power adder of the, ve power adder of the vehicle, uh, these numbers can get inaccurate once you add the correction factor. A turbo car, for instance, is gonna be a good uh, example of that and I mean, that's a whole separate conversation maybe that'll be the next uh, in this series of dyno videos uh, but the most important thing to take away from this is if somebody's showing you uncorrected numbers it's not really relevant so you should just kind of look past it you want to look at correction uh, corrected numbers SAE preferably STD is fine as long as you're you know always using STD or always using SAE or comparing you know them against each other that way uh, you know so why would you show uncorrected numbers well obviously there's a good example this is we have uh, Ryan brought his car in for the 1100 package which is 1100 at the wheels but we only have the 27 pulley on it right now uh, we're getting there uh, but it's already making a thousand uh, so this is great of course I want to advertise a thousand horsepower but all of a sudden I switch it over to uncorrected well 1059 well of course I'm gonna post that number right I want everybody to think I made the most power possible well as an end user and a customer, if you want to post that number, that's fine. That's your car. You know, you're happy. It's cold out. It made great power. But if I am trying to sell you something or at least educate you on something, it's up to me to make sure that education is accurate. Okay. And it would be very reckless of me to post this 1059 horsepower number because you're not going to make that corrected ever with this, you know, suite of parts. So I'm gonna sell you based on 1,059. You're gonna dyno it and make 1,000 and get mad at me. I'd rather sell you at 950 and you make 1,000 personally, uh, you know, but dyno graphs sell parts. And that's why I'm doing these videos because the more you know as an end user, you can actually make an educated decision on what you're looking at. I mean, we have another dyno video that you can check out by looking here. Uh, you know, oftentimes I see people only looking at these peak numbers and that's just such a small part of it. You know, this car peaked at uh, 81, the red one here, and the blue one peaked a little higher. Uh, but really that you're only in that spot for a little bit. You really have to understand how to look at the curve too, the shape of the curve, make sure there's not some big blip at the top that isn't really accurate. That's another way uh, these, these graphs can get very inaccurate. So you got to really kind of look at it. You know, I've seen graphs that are look like EKGs and the number is real huge, but I mean, anybody that knows what they're looking at knows it's not accurate, but there's so much misinformation on reading dyno graphs where people don't take the effort to understand what they're looking at that you know you, it's easy to look at this number. So that's why I make these videos to kind of try and help you guys out. I do this every day. It's very obvious to me, but when I explain this stuff, I can understand or realize that it's not as easy for everybody to absorb. So the big takeaway from this video is if you're comparing dyno numbers, whether uh, on your own car versus other cars or your own car versus your own car six months from now, you always have to use corrected numbers. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time and money. 
Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share this with your friends. We're really trying to blow this channel up for 2021. I know I haven't been doing many of these types of videos lately. We've been doing just the live videos, uh, but we're gonna change that for 2021. We've got Francis on board now. He's helping us produce these videos, and uh, we're gonna try and maybe starting in January, release one of these sorts of videos a week, uh, either this or a dyno video. We did do a dyno video on Ryan's car, uh, in total, uh, uh, he did great on 93 octane also, so tune in uh, to that uh, probably next week to see the full video on Ryan's car. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one.